Away from that, President Ekufuadu is urging Parliament to prioritise the passage of the Anti-Vigilantism and Other Related Offences Bill after the House failed to include it among agenda for emergency sitting that started yesterday. The bill, among others, seeks to outlaw uh, issues of vigilantism and impose stiffer punishment on offenders when passed. Addressing members of the Anti-Corruption Coalition, President Ekufuadu expressed hope the bill will be considered first when the House reconvenes for a second meeting of, uh, of the year next month. To be, uh, we have seen the degeneration of vigilantism in other parts of, of the continent take on even greater uh, significance. So I think that all well-meaning people in this country must come together uh, to, do, to, to ensure its demise as soon as possible. I think that the opportunity that lawmaking gives in our system of governance for all interested parties to contribute to the making of law is something that people like you have to take full advantage of. It is before the parliament. My understanding is that the parliament will be dealing with it as the first matter of concern when they engage on their full term. I don't mean this emergency meeting that they have with their full term the third term, the second term, their second meeting of the year, which begins at the end of May. This is the first item on the agenda. And I believe that the parliamentary processes themselves give the opportunity for all well-meaning citizens to contribute to the lawmaking. And I would call upon everybody, not just you around the table, but out there within the, the larger Ghanaian polity to contribute to the making of that law. Once we get a good law, we then have the even more uh, onerous uh, burden of making sure that the law is implemented and is implemented firmly and consistently. So um, the steps that have been taken are steps to indicate my own personal concern and determination to do something about it. And hopefully we'll arrive at a good end and very soon. This is not something that is going to have to hang around for months and years. This is something that hopefully by the end of June, at the latest, we will have a meaningful law on the table signed up. The president is also questioning the relevance of the constitutional review exercise undertaken during the late President Mills administration, which recommended some amendment and reforms. He indicated the over 100 amendments proposed amounted to rewriting the 1992 constitution and says the committee, committee was never clothed with powers to do that. My stance on it has been known to many people. I believe that the effort that was made by the Mills administration amounted was tantamount to rewriting the constitution of our country. I don't believe any government has a power to set such a process into being. If we want a new constitution, we should have a consultative assembly or a constituent assembly to come and vote on. Ultimately, it was the people of Ghana whose vote on the 28th of April made it possible for us this constitution. If we're going to have changes that require, I don't know, attorney, tell me, how many amendments are, are required by this uh, constitutional review? No, no, more. More, more. more. It's, it's a hundred and something. And uh, the... Uh, Sorry? Were you giving us an answer? How many amendments were proposed by the Constitutional Review Commission? It was about 99. Yeah, so it was 88 or 99. 99, yes. 100, all together. Yes, I'm saying. I thought, in fact, it was more than 100, I see. I believe it was more than 100. <laughs> More than 100. I don't understand what constitutional uh, instrument can be the result of 100 amendments at the same time being put to the electorate. That, that in itself, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of questions. But as I say, it has been remiss on our part not to have made a public uh, statement in one way or another as to what we intend to do with this process. But I think that sometimes inaction or silence in itself tells you about how, how, how uh, somebody feels about it. Uh, the part that to me was absolutely pregnant and that needed to be done was the part involving democratizing local government and bringing partisan considerations into local government. And that is the one that has been taken and is being given a full uh, sort. 
away from the presidency about 260 million dollars will be needed to upgrade the sewage system at the Kolibu teaching hospital that's according to its chief executive dr daniel asari he revealed this on monday when the health facilities regulatory agency hefra issued a license to the hospital to operate in the country so Mrs. beryl ernestina richter was at the presentation and filed this report in January this year, HEFRA embarked on a tour of some health facilities in Accra that had not been accredited by the agency. The authority issued a March 31 ultimatum for Kolebu to begin processes to be licensed or risk closure. Speaking at the presentation on Monday, Dr. Daniela Sari noted there is a need to rehabilitate some infrastructure at the over 90-year-old facility. Some of the things which are 100 years old can never sustain itself now. Even the underground switch which goes into the listing, it's asbestos, asbestos. We're changing them alone will cost no more no less than 260 million US dollars. And I think the Ghana government is aware of that. He admits this is cost intensive and the hospital is looking at lobbying and working with the Ministry of Health, Finance and other relevant stakeholders to address the situation. We don't have a senior treatment plant and that's capital project. So we need to lobby, facilitate, talk to the Ministry of Health and get the sewer treatment plant in, pl in place probably joined to the lavender hair one so that the compost, all the figure matter can go into a compost manual. So it's an action plan drawn and with the government, with the Coastal Development Authority. Some of these things are already in the, in the budget and we can do that within a period of four or five years. Yeah. Meanwhile, acting registrar of the Health Facilities Regulatory Agency, HEFRA, Matthew Treme, who presented the certificate to the chief executive of the hospital, cautioned other health facilities to register with the agency or face closure. I believe that we as a country today can share the positive news that Kolebu is now legally licensed in accordance with Act 829. And that is positive news. And what that means is that other facilities that have not done what they're supposed to do. That was Beryl Ernestina Richter's report. Now, coming up in business on News Desk, Registrar General's Department unhappy about last minute attitude of some Ghanaians as the department records long queues to beat deadline for filing of tax returns. We've got details shortly.